Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In our last video, we created a class in C++. We talked about how to declare a class. We talked about how to have part of our class be public and how part of our class will be private. We talked about how to declare instance variables in our private section. And we also talked about how to write a constructor, how to create uh, accessors and modifiers or mutators in our class. And all of those had analogs to what we learned in Java. What I want to do today is I want to talk about the idea of overloading operators. So we've talked about overloading in the context of Java. The idea that I could have two functions with the exact same name but with different parameters, different orders of parameters, and different parameter signature is what we called it. And because of the parameter signature, the order of the parameters determined which method was being called. But I'm overloading an operator, not just a method. In other words, I'm changing the meaning in C++ for a plus sign, or a minus sign, or an insertion operator. I'm changing what those mean in C++, in the language. So when it comes across a plus sign between two functions, it knows to add it. And the closest analog I can think of in, in Java was when we overloaded the plus operator for strings. So if I had a string plus a string, it tried to concatenate the two strings. So I'm changing the meaning of plus. And that's really kind of the, the best way to explain what we're doing today. Now, so I'm going to write some methods. By the way, I'm in fraction.cpp, but keep in mind that the plus sign doesn't belong to the fraction class. So I'm not going to be using the scope fraction colon colon, that scope indicator that we were using in our previous video. I'm just going to be using standard code and standard types, but I will be heavy on directly accessing memory. So I'm going to be using ampersands and I'm going to be using pointers. I'm going to be pointing and I'm going to be dereferencing. So that's what we're going to be emphasizing here. First, when I add two fractions together, I should get a fraction, which means my return type is going to be a fraction. The next thing that should happen is the function name, which is a plus, and then the parameter list. So I'm going to have two fractions, one which is going to be my left-hand side and one which is going to be my right-hand side. And I can tell you that this, what I've written here, is horrible because it just won't work. First off, in order to access the left-hand side and right-hand side, I actually need to pass these as reference and not just by value. And that's because in C++, anytime I'm using an operator, I need to get the contents from memory. So I'm not going to be getting objects. I'm going to be getting pointers to the objects. Second is this is not a function name. This is an operator and it's going to try and add what's on the left side with what's on the right side. I need to tell Java that I'm trying to change the meaning of plus in memory and so ordinarily I try and put an ampersand here because I want to change the pointer part of it. I want to change what it is in memory. But this makes no sense in C++. There is a special type called operator. And this is actually the name of my function that I'm trying to write here. I'm writing a function called operator plus, and it's going to operate on the left-hand side and the right-hand side and going to return a fraction. So this is the method header for overloading an operator that's a binary operator. And so what we're going to do now is type the code for this. Keep in mind that when I add two fractions, I need to get a common denominator. And my common denominator I get by taking the left-hand side denominator and multiplying it by the right-hand side denominator. So that is my common denominator. I then need to get a new numerator. And the way I do that is by cross-multiplying. I'm going to be taking the left-hand side's numerator and multiplying it by the right hand side's denominator and then taking that and adding it to the right hand side's numerator and multiplying it by the left hand side's denominator. 
It's this cross-multiplying idea. So if I have two fractions, a over b and c over d, I want to multiply a times d. I want to multiply c times b and then take the sum of those two. So that's my new numerator and my common denominator, and I want to create a fraction. Now what we learned is that we would just do fraction, the type, and then we would have the name, and then we would have the parentheses, which would be our parameters, and we have two parameters. We have a new numerator, and we have a common denominator. And then we would return, well, let's call it sum to be clear here. So this is what we should have. This should work, but it's not going to work. And the reason is, when I try and run this program, when I try and add these two fractions together, I'm declaring a variable, but then I'm immediately hitting the end of the function, and I lose the variable to the ether. I actually want to create a new memory location, something permanent, something that's going to last for a while. So in order to do that, this is where I actually use the new and the constructor fraction, like this. And it's important for me to realize that this is going to create a pointer, and I want the object in that pointer. So I need to dereference it, and I want to dereference here. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to compile, so just to make sure this works. So I've got g++ fraction main.cpp, with the output being fraction main.exe and that compiles fine. So, for this operator that I'm overloading, I still need a return type because I'm writing a function. I need the function name, but my function name is special here. I've got ampersand operator plus. And I have two parameters. I'm always gonna have what comes to the left and what comes to the right when I have a binary operator. In other words, the first part here is what's to the left of the plus sign, and this right part here is what comes after the plus sign. So in my fraction main, I would write this as fraction f3 gets f1 plus f2, and then I can see out f3.getValue, end line. And this should work. If I compile this and run it, it's going to take two-thirds plus two-thirds, and that should give me four-thirds, which would be 1.3 repeating. So this add works. So what I need to do now is I need to do my other four operations. So I'm going to copy and paste, because when I do subtraction, the nice thing is, the only main difference here is instead of adding the numerators to get a new numerator, I subtract them. So the code for this is very straightforward. If I want to do the same thing for multiplication, in other words, change what the asterisk means when it shows up between two fractions, I actually want to take what I did for the common denominator and use it to determine this new numerator. So I'm going to copy this code here. And instead of doing this cross-multiply aspect, I want to make these get numerator and get numerator. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me a product, which I can then return. So that takes care of multiplying these two fractions. And then, of course, the fourth operator that we want to do is going to be our division. So when we hit this forward slash, we're going to have to change these. So my get numerator will actually be here because I need to flip the right-hand side fraction. And my get denominator is actually going to be here. And this is going to give me my quotient. And of course, this should have been different, so let's call it diff. So let me save this. Let me compile it, just to make sure it works. And it compiles with no issue. So if I go over here, I know that fraction f3 is this, so we're printing out the sum. 
if I say fraction f4 is f1 minus f2, then I want to see out f4.get value. I'm hoping I don't end up with an issue there. Uh, if I do fraction f5 gets f1 times f2, and then see out f5.get value. And then fraction f6 gets f1 divided by f2, and then see out f6.get value. I should be getting predictable results here. If I'm adding the fractions, I should be getting the 1.3 repeating. Because they're both 2 thirds, when I subtract them, I should get a value of 0. If I multiply 2 thirds times 2 thirds should be 4 ninths, so it should be 0.4 repeating. And if I divide 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds should give me 1. So I'm going to compile this. My internet's running a little slow right now. So I'm going to compile this. And run it. And notice I get those results that I was expecting. So my addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division appear to be working well. So the final operator that I want to overload today is I want to overload the insertion operator. In other words, I've been doing this C out, get numerator, and then a vinculum, and then the get denominator like I did in the main over here. And I've also been printing get value, but it sure would be convenient if all I had to do was print out F3. It would be really nice if I could do that. Right now I don't have that option. Right now if I try and compile that program it's going to tell me, come on, one more. Come on computer, nice computer. If I try and compile this it's going to tell me that there's a problem here. It's going to give me an error and I'll show you what it is as soon as it happens. Come on. There we go. So notice it says that the operator insertion doesn't exist. And so what I need to do is I need to write this insertion operator code. Now it's giving me a lot of errors because there's a lot of different in insertion operators that I could do here. I could be printing out ints or chars or doubles or floats or booleans or strings or other things. So that's going to be the problem. So in order for this to work though, I need to figure out what type am I returning. Well, we talked about how we had write streams and read streams when we were reading and writing to a file. So we had input streams and output streams. And if I'm going to be using C out for my insertion operator, I'm going to be dealing with output streams. So my return type is an O stream. I'm going to be overwriting the insertion operator, I'm going to have a left side which is like a C out or some other type of O stream, which I'm going to call output. And then I'm going to have a fraction, which is going to be the right hand side that I'm going to be printing out. So to my output stream, I'm going to be directing the right hand side's numerator and then a slash for the vinculum, and then my right-hand side's denominator. And I don't have to return because it already knows the output stream that I'm dealing with here. So this should be sufficient. And now if I compile, oh, it does have a problem. I probably do need to return out. So let's do that. Nope, still having an issue. So let me pause here and see what I can do to figure that out. Okay, and I figured out what the issue is here. And it's something very basic. What are the first things that I put in every program we've written so far? Well, I need to include IO stream, definitely because we are creating an output stream. That's the whole idea behind overloading the insertion operator. And then I need to make sure that I do using namespace standard because I need to make this std colon colon o stream. So we're going to recompile this.
and that works fine. So now remember that we had in our fraction main, we had changed it so it would just print out F3. So if I go down here and I do fraction main, come on, fraction main.exe, and I try and run this. Notice that it's printing out this fraction, 36 over 27. Now, it's horrible, but that does reduce to the four-thirds that we expect. Notice that I'm taking two-thirds and multiplying it time, or adding it to six-ninths. So I get two times the denominator 9, which is 18. I get six times the denominator 3, which is 18. And 18 plus 18 gives me this 36. So what's interesting here is that I now have a way to print out fractions, which means all of this adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing that we did, I can now print out not just the value, but I can print out the fraction themselves. Eeks, did I not save? I forgot to save, that's the issue. So let's save and then compile and then run. And notice that I've got fractions, 36 out of 27, 0 out of 27, 12 out of 27, because my common denominator is always going to be the denominator 3 times the denominator 9, or 27. And then I have dividing the fractions, which gives me 18 over 18, which is 1, because my fractions are both 2 thirds. So what we've done today is we've overloaded five operators, the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division operators, which come from the standard operators for mathematics, as well as the insertion operator to print to an output stream. I've intentionally not done the input operator for the input stream, the extraction operator, because it's very troublesome. And when C++ tries to read a fraction, the first thing it's going to see is an int, and the int version gets done. So it's not easy at all to do the extraction operator for a fraction. But these other operators work fairly well. The big problem that you've noticed here is that these fractions are not very nice fractions to look at. So in our next video, we're going to be talking about introducing helper functions, especially stuff to help us reduce these fractions and generally clean up our product here. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.